every step of the way, you're gonna find different people that are just really, really well suited to do one thing really well. We're a little bit of a hybrid. We do retail well, but we also do custom well. These people are building one business at a time. We've been building multiple ones simultaneously. Originally, we were retailers. The custom side of the business was, you know, that wasn't even a thought. Um, we actually started in the Berlin Mart. I started on a table, kind of the size of this, this office table. And I was selling like, you know, mobile accessories at the time. Um, no money, I had to drop out of school. You know, I just didn't have the money to go to school. My family just didn't have what I needed in order to get an education. So I needed to get creative. So I started selling mobile accessories on the outside of the market. And I built from there, step by step. First thing I did was I got myself a store. So first store we actually opened was in Deptford, New Jersey. We still did the accessory side of the business. Then my business partner at the time, when we, you know, when I first started, I'm talking almost 20 years ago, um, he was like, you know, we should check out the shore. So we came down to the shore and I just, I fell in love, you know? It's like, uh, where, where I grew up, we had Coney Island. We didn't have anything like this. So just being exposed to that for the first time, it was just very eye-opening eye for me. So we ended up opening a store in Ocean City. Fast forward a few years later, I, got, you know, I went back to school, got a degree. I finally had enough money to pay for college. Went back to school, got a degree. And then I was like, okay, now it's, it's time for me to start focusing just dominantly on really building my, my future. So that was like 2003, yeah. You know, I grew up in Brooklyn, Sunset Park, uh, Sunset Park specifically. And I just, I would walk around some of these downtown areas in Brooklyn, like Fifth Avenue, where they just had a lot of re like apparel retailers, but it was more urban and less shore or resort. So I, you know, I, I just, in the back of my mind, all of those stores growing up as a kid, they were always there. So I go to this, sh this shore resort area, there's a lot of people, and I think to myself, what was back there that impacted me that I could bring here and do something creative with? And one of those things was a hat store. It was just, I don't know, it, it seems like unorthodox for somebody to think of that specific item. But I remember as a kid, just buying, like having, saving $20, and back to, you know, $20, I'm, I'm not that old, but $20 was a big deal. I bought my first hat, it was a White Sox hat. Then I saved another 20 bucks, I bought another, you know, a Red Sox hat. And I just thought to myself, like, this, this could be a real business down here. This custom business, more or less, was born out of necessity, right? So you don't have a, a key factor in, in your retail operation that you need. So if you don't have that, you have to be creative. So like I said, it was actually a blessing that we didn't have it early on because it taught us to be scrappy and creative and use what we had, right? So obviously getting into uh, an, a value added approach to a business made perfect sense. I'm over here, you know, trying to build a business with these brands. Some of them are not, you know, on board just yet. And I have to think to myself, how do I get creative in order to build this business irrespective of what happens here. If it happens, if it doesn't happen, I still need to be where I need to be. So, you know, the first thing that came to mind was, you know, how do we bring more value to the headwear space? How do we bring more value to apparel in general? So, obviously, decorated apparel was, uh, you know, a good, a good avenue for us to look at. The only problem was we didn't know anything about embroidery. We started with embroidery. We started with a single head uh, 1501C, like, not the wide, just, small enough to do headwear. And uh, my thinking was, if we could take a, a, a $30 hat at the time and make it a $40, $50 hat, well, that, that, just, that moves the needle for us. If we can maybe begin doing some apparel, uh, location shots and stuff like that, that opens up another avenue of sales for us that we don't have. And that compensates for, the, for that missing piece of the pie, right? Quickly after buying that first uh, embroidery machine, I realized there was a big business there. So we started off very, very small, very, very humble. 
1,200 square feet, maybe 1,000. And then we kind of learned every piece of the equipment, made a lot of mistakes, paid for those mistakes with time and money. And then, uh, you know, this was what, 14 you said, Phil? Yeah. 14. So I would say probably around 15, we were like ready to buy another piece of equipment. So we bought a wider format. I realized, okay, we need something a little bit bigger here to handle that. And then the next year, I bought like a, like a forehead and I moved those single heads to the shore and I put the forehead and I bought another single head. And uh, you know, throughout the years, opportunities arise where I could buy equipment and I became a little bit more savvy about the purchase of these equipment. So I just, I would acquire new equipment based on you know, what opportunities were available. So we have six head machines, we have four head machines, we have single heads, we have two heads, we have DTG machines, we have screen printing equipment, we have, you know, dryer, you, you name it. I gotta give credit where credit's due. One of the major things that we did right was we, tro we tried to choose the best, we tried to choose the, be the best equipment, the best software, and the best people. So the best software for the job, when we set this, when we set up our production workflow and networked all of our machines, was Deco Network. You guys were the most, you guys were the, the most inclusive. Like there was Inksoft, there was some other competitors that we looked at, but um, after really digging in, you guys were the ones that really put everything together in one place. So credit goes to you guys for helping us get that process in line. Um, but that, that's part of the process. The other part of the process is keeping all that inefficiency in line. And you do that by good systems, good process, good equipment. Cheap equipment is not good equipment. Good equipment is good equipment. Cheap personnel is not good personnel. Good personnel is good personnel. And, ser and service also, software. So this is part of that three-legged stool, right? Uh, the biggest thing that stuck out to me about Deco Network at the time was they had the embroidery infrastructure locked down where other companies had not gone in that direction. And with us having our roots in embroidery and only just recently have gotten into direct garment that was really a big thing for me. I was like, I, I really liked the fact that we could actually take embroidery orders and there was some native uh, not digitizing function, but native embroidery file storage function. I thought that was really strong. So that's kind of how I kind of highlighted Deco Network. Um, and of course, some of the backend functionality too. But that's, that's kind of how that happened. We really needed a way to have uh, a more visual process, not so much of a written process, because just to reduce defects and things like that. So other things that I enjoyed was the fact that there was a wide variety of uh, decoration plat uh, uh, services that it covered. Just like Mo said earlier, we're a company that doesn't like to stay in one lane. We like to uh, race multiple horses at one time, so to speak, because you, you never know. You might have one horse that wins, you might have two, you never know, right? So it's always great as a company to be continually innovating and trying new, you know, new decoration services. So one thing that's cool about Deco is it allows us to do that. It allows us to, you know, get into screen printing, which we have. Uh, offer heat transfer vinyl, which we also do. You know, applique potentially. And then also, because it has that customizability in, in the uh, design studio, you can do things that are unconventional. I've seen some, you know, some things that we do is like offer patches. I've seen other companies do a lot of innovative stuff with the customization. So I think that's really strong. And all of these things really stuck out to me and were things that attracted us to the software. The whole customer interface is definitely something that Deco Network got very right because it creates a relationship between you and the customer in, in, a, in a digital way on top of the, the personal way. Obviously the customer, when they, when they interact with you, when they do business with you, if the vibe is good and all of that is perfect, they enjoy, they want to come back. And a big part of the customs apparel business is repeat business. You know, we don't want to just print a uh, hundred shirt order for someone one time. We want to do all of their shirt business. We want to do their embroidery business. We want to do all of that stuff for them. So by having all of their design uh, saved in that customer portal, for them to be able to be like, yeah, I just want to reorder of this exact same thing. Same thing we did last year, you know, whatever. We have so many customers that come through the door. Uh, let's say that sales associate that worked with them is not in that day. There's so much potential for 
just missing out on solid business just because the process is not on point. And so the software does answer that question because with a click of a button, you can basically create a new quote and just get into production as quickly as possible, get the payment and go from there. So I think, I think that was really, really good that they did that, yeah. It never gets old. I may, at times, put like, like I'll walk into the building and it, it may not be something that I'll say but it's definitely something that I feel. Every time I walk into this place, when I hear those machines rumbling, it's just a, it, there are people that have like all these affirmations all around their room. You ever meet somebody, you go to their house, they have like all these love and family and all these affirmations. That, that affir affirmation for me is like, is super important because it just indicates how right we are and how right we can be. And it just, it, it shows me that there's really no limit to what we can do.